Zombie movies are everywhere. Zombie TV shows are everywhere. Why is this? Depending on who you ask, the roots of our zombie obsession goes back to either Haitian uh, folk practices or to the symptoms of rabies. Because if you look at the human symptoms of rabies, you'll find things like delirium, partial paralysis, agitation, and if you were really picky and choosy, you can basically build a zombie scenario out of those symptoms. But of course it's the media where our zombie obsession really goes nuts. I mean, you go back to George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, Lucio Fulci's Zombie, in which a living corpse battles a shark on the sea floor. You have uh, TV shows like uh, AMC's The Walking Dead. We have a comedy like Shaun of the Dead or something gritty and hardcore like 28 Days Later. No matter what the exact flavor of the media, we cannot get enough with our zombie obsession. But why? Well, first of all, there's the apocalypse angle to consider. Law and order are falling into chaos. The zombies are roaming everywhere and it's just sort of a, a return to a man versus nature kind of scenario. And there's something kind of uh, empowering about this kind of fantasy. I mean, when we fantasize about it, we never think about the hardcore realities, like how am I going to eat? How am I actually going to uh, uh, take care of any sickness that happens to me? What am I going to do about using the bathroom? And then there are the zombies to consider, these lumbering corpses that are coming after us and we're just having to dispatch them one after the other. Uh, you know, pickaxe to the head, shotgun blast to the head, uh, baseball bat to the head, and it's not really hard work but it takes all day and they never stop coming. Why, why does this fascinate us so? What does this mean? In 2010, uh, the author Chuck Klosterman put forth the idea that the model of the zombie is essentially what it's like to go through our daily life and deal with the tedium of, say, going through your work emails and clicking them off one by one, or going through Twitter and out of a feeling of obligation more than anything, catching up on what the latest buzz is, or doing any kind of paperwork uh, at work or at home. It's not really hard to deal with each little piece of it, but as a whole, it never stops. And so in this, Klosterman argues that the zombie is the perfect model for modern life. But of course, the other thing about the zombie scenario is that it gives us a pretty clear moral authority to use brutal and ruthless violence against perceived threats. Because you see a zombie, it's pretty clear what the situation is. Oh, that's no longer a person. That's a walking corpse that wants to bite me on the brain. So it's perfectly okay for me to go up and beat it to a pulp with a baseball bat or blast it repeatedly with some sort of a gun. In real life, it's a lot different. The people that we perceive as threats, the situations that we perceive as threats, uh, it's not necessarily going to be a black and white issue. There's so much gray in figuring out, oh, is the suspicious person on my street right now, is that person really a threat? or does they have a legitimate reason to be there. Likewise, my neighbor, who seems like the most normal person in the world, could secretly be a serial murderer. I can't tell. There's so many unknowns. And as humans, we are notoriously bad at judging the threats in our surrounding environment. But with the zombies, it's pretty easy. That thing's a threat, and I can use the most violent means possible to dispose of it. So what about you? Does this information shed light on your own love of zombie media? Or perhaps it sheds some light on your distaste of all things zombie? Let me know. I would love to hear about it. You can leave a comment below, you can leave a video response, and don't forget to subscribe so you can check out even more mind-blowing videos.